Every fighter has a story. What is yours? In a realm where every monumental achievement starts as a simple thought, a spark of inspiration, poised to ignite into a triumphant blaze, the world of boxing stands as a testament to the art of transforming an idea into a palpable reality. Every boxer, like a masterful artisan, meticulously hones each detail, embodying the essence of the sport where even the smallest nuances can shift the balance between victory and defeat. This relentless journey towards excellence admits no shortcuts. Within this arena of unrelenting will and resilience, the dreams of innumerable fighters are nurtured and brought to fruition. It's a realm where ambitions soar, where the quest for greatness transcends being merely a journey and becomes the destination itself. Boxing is not merely a sport. It's a workshop where dreams are sculpted into reality, where fighters engage not just their adversaries, but with their own destinies. In this world, each punch, each bead of sweat, every triumph or setback is part of a larger narrative where legends are crafted and new stars ascend. Welcome to Rising Stars Arabia 2, The Revolution. Well, it was a great success, you know. The collaboration was a huge success globally, you know, as a, it's, it's, it's a small platform, you know, for the region, but what's well, a big platform worldwide, you know, it's, it's the zone, it's ESPN Knockout, it's broadcasted globally, Abu Dhabi TV in the region, DCT, Department of Culture and Tourism, Abu Dhabi, it's a government entity, you know, supporting uh, such an event is a huge success itself. It's just an amazing opportunity you know, to be able to have like big fights in the region in the past few years, I feel like the sport of boxing has grown tremendously. And like to be able to have this event, this opportunity for all the Arab fighters in the MENA region, it's amazing to just showcase talent that we haven't seen before. For you, every day is the same day, holiday, not holiday. There's no days off. If you have a fight, if you're in camp, you just gotta keep going, man. Here goes the last one. Abu Dhabi is doing a great job. I mean, without Abu Dhabi, I don't think it would be possible. <laughs> I mean, uh, they, they're a big, big, big thing for us, especially because uh, they have the facilities, they have the infrastructure, they have the financial support. So, yeah, they, they are like our backbone in order to keep going and doing this. But for, for them to keep pushing us, we got we to gotta perform well, we got to do stuff right, you know. We got to show them that we're about this shit, you know. Like, it's not just US, UK, or what, other countries, you know, like Europe. Like, we can, we can be better than them, and we are better than them, but we just, we just need the time to prove ourselves, and it's coming together, man. What do you know about your opponent? In terms of... Uh, like, where are you fighting, where are you from? Well, he's from the UK. His name is Jeff Forey. He... He got some uh, good names on his record. He lost against O'Hara Davis, Archie Price, or Alfred Price was his name. I'm not sure. Anyways, they're like, uh, that Price guy is undefeated, and O'Hara Davis is a good fighter as well. We're not, we don't want to talk about them, but 
he had he has some solid fights on his record, but little he knows that he doesn't know me. You know, he might have seen my fights, but he doesn't know how it feels to be inside the ring with me. So he will find out soon, very soon. <laughs> Um, I came into the gym in 2015 just to try it out for fitness. But then as I progressed with the sport, I just fell in love with it. Um, it wasn't just like a learn how to box type thing, but it did teach me a lot outside of the ring as well. So I really appreciate the sport for how it made me become the person today. Routine, routine. Same old boring stuff, but the, boring's, the boring stuff takes you real far. You know what I say? You build your base, you, get, you have a good foundation, gonna take it really far so it's always the fundamental for us in terms of the boxing side of things we're very confident we're extremely confident in terms of the fighters side of things the talents we're extremely confident in terms of the support broadcasting support uh, Abu Dhabi support we're again extremely confident the thing where where we really I'm not worried worried about, but you know what I'm trying to build now more and more is to is to build the fan bases for the fighters. You know, the 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 the, the Jordanian supporting the Jordanian fighters, the UAE uh, nationals uh, supporting the UAE national fighters, Syrian supporting the Syrians, and so on. And and this is this is where I want to start building on that now. You know, because uh, you know, as I told the fighters. Um, you guys have the talent, but 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 to become a star, you need to. We need to start building their fan bases here. You know. I think it's amazing that they're doing it from the grassroots because it's just building a whole foundation, you know? So fighters in the Arab region, they don't really have that platform or the opportunity to do so. So coming from the ground up, I feel like it will become like a more long-term solution. The thing is, it's, see, sports, to grow, to grow a sport, it's, or, you know, from, from grassroots, you need, you, you need, you need infrastructure. You know, first, need, first of all, you need that vision. Then you need, you need infrastructure, you need expertise, you know. Then you need to grow talent. So it's, it's strategically, I would say Abu Dhabi is, is in the better standing to do that. So if, if we ask, if you ask me who else could do in the region or who else has done it with other sporting entities, um, you know, I would like Abu Dhabi would be one of the names that comes to my uh, comes to me first, first hand. Looks like a rain here. <laughs> Work time, baby. Last two, three hard days of training and then we enter fight week. Oh, I made it very clear to Abu Dhabi and to our partners, you know, with the experience I've had in the business, with my relations in the business, I know we could have Abu Dhabi to be as a capital for boxing. They are, that their target is, is, is from a long time to become the capital of martial arts. In terms of boxing, I could speak about boxing and I have the capability of, 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 of putting um, uh, Abu Dhabi on the map as the capital of boxing in the region, Middle East and North Africa. And uh, we are on the way of doing that. You know, uh, it doesn't always have to be the big, big events. It's what my target is building the grassroots. You know, the, the boxers in the region trust me. Uh, they have the confidence in me. Our partners trust me. They have the confidence in me. So with that, with that marriage with the partners and the boxers and, and all that, we could, we could achieve uh, having Abu Dhabi to become the capital of boxing.
And this is, this is just the beginning. You know, within, within the next five years, I do believe that those, the boxers that are on this platform, rising stars, will reach on the next level of, of fighting superstars in Abu Dhabi. And that will be a success for ourselves as a promotion, for the boxers, as well for Abu Dhabi. He's the strongest guy ever. Trust me, he's the future champ. Trust me. I left the hood, I said I would. I left the hood, I said I would. I was caught up in a situation. Could have gone real bad. I took a long vacation. No doubt, left man of them mad. Gone. I left the hood, I said I would. So I'ma get mine and I won't feel bad. Nah. If they could, they probably should. But most man end up in a two man pad. Left the hood, I said I would. I left. I left the hood, I said I would. Ain't coming back. If they could, they probably should. Oh yeah. I left the hood, I said I would. I left the hood, I said I would. Left the hood, I said I would. I left. I left the hood, I said I would. I ain't coming back. Uh, if they could, they probably should. Oh yeah. I left the hood, I said I would. I left the hood, I said I would. It's countdown, baby. Today is the fourth, right? Nine days left. I mean, for me, honestly, it's eight days because for me, it's just the way in. After that, it's just. Having fun, man. Do what we've always been doing. Another day down, another like two days of hard work and then we are done. Actually one day. And then it's fight week, baby. Gotta tune in, gotta tune in. It's about to be a fireworks, definitely. Oh, just show support to your local talents. The only way like things can ever, can ever actually become big over here is if you got a good base of support within the country. So I... As we always say, like me and my friend, just support your local talents. It doesn't have to be someone from abroad, you know, like support whoever is just around the country and watch them blow up and it's going to be a great support system, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm multi-talented, I'm multi-talented, you're gonna see, I'm gonna send it straight to I don't know. What about you, what about your goals? Never done it, never done it, so I'm not gonna say too much. I'm not gonna say too much because I have a feeling that I might not even hit it. <laughs> of having
having a, a fight on uh, the golf course, right? I just wanted us to play 18 holes, really, you know, but take what you can get. Take what you can get. <laughs> I said to the guy before, I said, uh, I said oh, I'd really love you know, to play 18 holes. He said, what's your handicap? I said, 30. He said, this isn't the golf course for you. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of uh, the sport, because you do something you've never done, and you can explore the world, explore beautiful places like here in Abu Dhabi so many beautiful places and um, not just the opportunity to fight but to see things that I've never saw that's amazing and that's what I love about the sport it takes you places you've never been with the second event of Rising Stars Arabia in Abu Dhabi fast approaching fighters face the rigorous ordeal of weight cuts, a pre-battle challenge that must be conquered before stepping into the ring. Regardless of one's background, this preliminary fight against the scale is an inevitable adversary every athlete must overcome to make it to the actual contest. Last session, tomorrow's the weigh-in, and then after tomorrow's the fight. As we always say, tomorrow is the hard part, and after tomorrow is the fun part. Right, Bert? Easy work. If he says easy work, baby, it's gotta be easy. <laughs> the hardest part the day before is just uh, sleeping, I guess, you know? Because you try, to, you try to sleep, but your body shuts down. The only good thing about the last day is that you know it's over in a couple hours. So that's why you, you, you push yourself a little bit more. It starts becoming a little bit easier for you, you know, for the mental part. I feel good, very good, because it was the last workout, sweat session. But it was hard because that was the last session and we are exhausted. But we, we are done. Listen, Saturday night, we got that on lock. Me and my brother and everybody who's taking part of this, uh, with this event. So yeah, tune in. Inshallah, we will win. All Arabic, we will win. Inshallah. El Comando! El Comando! 2-0, Viewed through the prism of boxing, people around the world discover commonality, celebrating not only the athlete's physical skills, but also the core human qualities of tenacity and respect. See, this is where I don't really know these fighters right now, so I got to come prepare, come early, get their names, get the dialects of their names, make sure the record's good. It's a lot of preparation. Some guys be thinking, oh, you just walk up and get in the ring. No, no, no. We got a lot of preparation. I got to get all these names. And all these names are different from what I'm used to in the States, so it's, just, it's a preparation, it's work. This sport underscores the profound connections that unite us, showcasing sports' unparalleled ability to foster unity and bridge differences among people. In, in boxing, unfortunately, the support comes when they, when they rise up. But where, what I'm looking at is to get that support from now, you know, so that as I said initially, you know, to get the people from, from the nations of, of their fighter come support, and all of them come together, if eventually they're all, all going to support each other, you know, because Arabs are one, we're all Arabs, and this is a platform for the Arabs, you know, and, and, and eventually the, the Emirati is going to support the Syrian, the Jordanian is going to support the Algerian, the Moroccan is going to support the, uh, the Emiratis, you know, so, so this, is, this is the plan, and and, you know, uh, I would like to keep on pushing on, on, on that part where come and support the fighters. Because without the fan bases, you know, the fighters, no matter what talent they have, no matter what support we have, no matter what broadcasting we have, the fighter cannot rise up without the fan base. So 
So, so coming in and supporting the, them fighters is the main uh, thing for a fighter to rise up and become a superstar in the region. for the press con so we also gonna have the media variants fighters who wait in the morning gonna be here uh, pretty much everybody's here and then they're gonna go on scales have their face off then we go for the for the press con shot maybe one hour we done good and we're all ready for tomorrow looking forward man we're over here at Yaz Links this is a crazy incredible the people pay thousand dollars to play golf on this course and well, we stuck right in the middle we're about to do a weigh-in how about that Bro, this is fascinating. Like, I've never, uh, I've been to a lot of boxing events in the region, but this is the first one that's outdoor. It's in a golf club facing the, the sea, and it's like, it's crazy. And the weather is fantastic, so it's going to be fireworks outdoor tomorrow. This is the opening attraction tomorrow evening. Four rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, from Pakistan. Shazada Shoho and his opponent boxing out of the blue corner representing the UAE two victories no defeats both of those by knockout Fahad Al Khuri As the sports scene flourishes across the Arab region Abu Dhabi aims to position itself as one of the epicenters of boxing focusing on nurturing the sport from the grassroots this ambition goes beyond just hosting events. It's about building a legacy where every jab and uppercut thrown on its soil is the seed for a global boxing empire. Before all this boomed up, I was actually some part involved in it in different countries, in Abu Dhabi, and you know, all, all around the region. So I'm not surprised. I knew it's coming. I knew it more than 10 years ago that this thing would be coming here. Uh, and, and you know, for me, I'm just doing my thing. I'm, I'm loving the support again from Abu Dhabi. I like their vision. It just aligned with my vision in, in terms of, of building, building it. And you know, eventually, for me, as I always say, you know, we're all one, and we all. My target is is is, is just to build up the Arab boxers. No matter from which country it is. If it's from Morocco, or is it from the UAE, or from Syria, or from Jordan, or from Saudi, or from Qatar. For me, it doesn't matter, you know. For me, it's, 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 it's no politics, it's boxing, it's a sport. And, and, and to, to, see, to see one of an Arab fighter fighting uh, a Western superstar, that is for me the goal. And, and I would love to see that happening in Abu Dhabi. I mean, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm a very fair person. Yes, okay, when you build up a fighter, yes, you have to, you have to give them some good fights to, to teach them the sport. But at the, at the main events, no. You know, they could win, they could lose. They could win, they could lose. I'm a, you know, it's not going to be easy fights. Even for Fahad, even for Badr, you know, uh, uh, Badr's opponent, he's been on a two, in, two uh, uh, winning streaks. You know, he's beaten some prospects in the UK who are upcoming. So, so I mean, that's not an easy fight for Badr. It's, he needs to prove himself. Same thing for Musa Gulam. You know, the main event, he's, uh, his, his opponent, Zulanga, from, from South Africa, is the number one rated fighter in South Africa. So it's, it's, it's not easy. They have to prove themselves because, you know, once, once, once we go on the big stage with the, with the, with the, with the uh, major superstars, you know, they can't be coming in as paper champions, you know, they can't be doing that. They have to be, they have to be committed and they have to be going through, uh, through, through tough fights to reach that level, to get the fan base, to get the respect, you know. So that's how it is. <laughs> I can't wait. Ready to relax right now. Then tomorrow we're gonna. Oh man, I'm I'm out of words right now. But it's gonna be sick. It's gonna be a sick event. It's gonna be a sick night. So make sure you stay tuned. Final words, brother. Final words, man. 
I would let I would let my performance speak for me, man. I'm finished with talking, man. I'm finished with spitting out words. If it's real, if it's not real, I only speak real and facts, all right. But I will let my I will let the performance speak tomorrow. Baby. I'm eager. I'm eager. I'm, I'm, we've trained hard for this. Um, we actually have a system that we want to follow for this fight. So it's just about executing the game plan. Uh, and I'm confident. I'm confident in Rob. I'm confident in the work that we put in. And uh, I think it's going to be a great night. Amazing. I never saw something like that. So for me, it's unbelievable. So I can't have any nerves, honestly. I should be prepared like I am. There are no nerves at all. Gentlemen, official time, one minute, 55 seconds of round number three. Referee Andre Shevlov calls a halt to the bout. Your winner by way of TKO from the UAE and still undefeated, Fahad al -Kure. As humans, regardless of our stature or strength, the prospect of entering battle invariably stirs a sense of fear within us. Fighters more than anyone understand this paradox intimately. Each step into the ring is not just about physical confrontation, but also about confronting their own vulnerabilities. In this, they epitomize the essence of bravery, not the absence of fear, but the resolve to face it head on and persevere. First one down, now it's my time. How no. proud are you of him? That was a war. Too proud, man, too proud. But this is how you learn, man. Sometimes you need to get punched to learn. But it is what it is, man. It's the part of the game, right? Yeah. We don't play no tennis. <laughs> it means a lot to me, bro, because uh, my, especially my brother, he had a lot of ups and downs with the sport, you know? And to see him now with me in the same event in Abu Dhabi, it's just crazy, like, I, I cannot be more happier and grateful than I am right now. And honestly, this camp, if it wasn't for him as well, 
would have been like very, very, very hard because he helped me a lot, not just with my nutrition, he helped me a lot with, with, with the mental part, you know, like, because before I used to go out on, on, on the runs by myself, you know, going on the way to the gym by myself, like I was doing everything by myself when I moved to the UAE. But uh, in this camp, he was with me, and it made it made stuff uh, way easier for me. Very good, very good. Yeah, of course, definitely. It was my t second fight, and yeah, I definitely needed it because now I can learn more, uh, become better. And uh, the good thing is that tough fights in the early stage, for me personally. It's better because now I can learn from them. Thank you, Ken, so much. And thank you, my coach, also, for what I do all this, this camp, this week camp. And I want to thank my family too much, like my mom, my cousins, my uncle, all my family. Alhamdulillah, we will win this way, this fight. Tala we have next a lot of fight. To be like big fighter, to be famous fighter. For help my family, for help myself. And for like, for like all this for my coach. Uh, that was a uh, very, very crazy performance. Uh, definitely uh, we got what we wanted, we got the decision. Uh, didn't expect the opponent to be so tough. He had a really good chin. Three knockdowns and the guy wouldn't get out. So props to the opponent. Uh, definitely got to go back to the gym and work on a few things, but alhamdulillah, we got the win and that's, that's the most important thing. For, for numerous fighters, boxing transcends the realm of mere sport. It serves as a beacon of hope. It provides a pathway out of the difficulties faced in their native lands, offering a chance to carve out a new path and reach unparalleled heights. Man, boxing for me is everything. I trust in boxing. Uh, you know, boxing changed very big things in my life. I lived Syria 13 years ago. I didn't see my family 13 years, you know. Yesterday was the first time I see my family just all because of boxing, you know, it make it possible, you know. Without boxing, I could not see my family again, I think, because you don't have the position, you don't have the money, you, you cannot, you know. So boxing can change your life if you believe and you work hard for boxing. to 74. While judges Mike Hale and Gary Kitanowski scored the contest 77 to 75. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Syria by way of Bayer Germany. The true allure of sports stems from its ability to equalize the competitive landscape. Stepping into a ring, cage, onto a court or field, personal histories and struggles become secondary, and the focus shifts to a battle of prowess, determination, and heart. In these moments, it's a direct confrontation, one-on-one, -on -one, where the trials of your past are set against the backdrop of a common goal, 
and the result rests squarely on your shoulders. The physical part is okay, you know, but it's just the mental part that always gets harder, you know. Each camp and each fight, you go further in your career, it's just get, it just gets harder, it doesn't get easier. This is what people don't understand. People think that our oh, boxing is just about physical part, you know, punch here, punch there, go to the gym. If I take you now to the gym for five years, okay, you would be a physical top. But the mental part, you reach, a, you reach, a, you reach a, a certain limit where you're gonna be like, nah, man, I can't keep doing this, you know, because it doesn't get easier. The physical part, it will get easier. You know, for me, if I'm off season, okay, I will go to the gym. After two weeks, I'm fit again. You know, physically, I'm back fit. But you gotta go again with the with the mental part, you know, which is always challenging. Okay, it never gets easier. Like I said, it always gets harder and harder and harder and harder. A human body is capable of doing a lot of stuff that you would not imagine. All right, if it wasn't for your mental strength, okay. You wouldn't be able to do it. So waking up like I like I did this camp, waking up every single day doing an ice bath, bro. Like wake up, not even wash my face, jump straight in the ice bath, okay? That's mental challenging, bro. If I didn't have the mental strength to do it, okay, I wouldn't realize that my body is capable of doing it. Same thing with boxing, okay? I go inside the ring, okay? Slaughtering each other, okay? Your body can take it. But the question is, is your mind going to keep taking it? You know? That's why this is where the mental part comes in. You always got you always gotta find a way to, to make your mindset healthy and strong and make you control your mind. Don't let the mind control you. Still undefeated from Dubai, UAE, Potter, the master, Sam Rini. Oh man, the Samarine fight was really competitive, it was really cool, both guys got heart, it was really, really nice seeing him win that fight. And talking about the event, the event is incredible bro. Like I'm so proud seeing fighters from all around the Arab world participating, becoming more pro, more experienced, you know, amazing man. This element of danger, element of the unknown, Barry. Yeah, and the fact that he's got 20 knockouts in 24 fights, even if he's boxed people who can't take a punch, he has some weight in his shots, doesn't he? So you're never quite sure. There you can see Makano looking to let go with the right hand. <laughs> Suddenly there was just a little injection of pace. Flurry of energy from Al Blushi. So Al Blushi, oh, that's a beauty. Now that was almost like an uppercut body shot through the guards. Gulping deep air. Is he going to get up? Ladies and gentlemen, official time. The end of round number six. Referee Rasmus Uwu calls a halt to the bout as the fighter out of the red corner is unable to continue.
your winner by way of TKO representing the UAE Kid and Running Fahad Al Blushe. Yo eh, describiría la forma en que yo salgo al ring cuando voy a pelear para una persona que nunca haya boxeado. Lo describiría de una manera como cuando te subes en una atracción que te viene la adrenalina esa y en ese momento es cuando te sientes vivo y el boxeo a mí me hace sentirme vivo. Si Dios quiere, yo la verdad mi, mi objetivo es disputar un campeonato del mundo y, y también si Dios quiere poder demostrar que, que soy el mejor y ganar ese título. Eso sería para mí lo más grande que, que hay. O sea, llegar a ser campeón del mundo creo que, que es eh, algo que muy pocos eh, pueden soñar con, con llegar. Bueno, soñar, pero... Eh, no se llega de la, de la noche a la mañana, tienes que tener eh, muchas cosas a tu alrededor, tienes que llevar muchos años dedicándote a esto y yo creo que eso eh, nos hemos sacrificado lo suficiente y hemos estado todos estos años trabajando para que nos llegue la oportunidad para disputar un título mundial, así que en este 2024, si Dios quiere, ojalá poder disputar un título mundial. Nice right up pick up the left hook, there's a shot that landed. And again, good shot. Oh, he's done. Oh, he's hurt him. He's, he's hurt him, he's down. There's still well over a minute and a half in this fourth round. Oh, he's counted him out. He was slow getting up. Still looks tired. What a result that is for Musa Galam. Ladies and gentlemen, official time. One minute, 23 seconds of round number four. Your winner by way of TKO from Cataluna, Spain, by way of Lorache, Morocco, King Khalifa, Musa Gula. <laughs> My man, Will! You caught me off guard, man! <laughs> Wallah, good, good, alhamdulillah, can't complain. It was a good fight, a learning fight, actually, and alhamdulillah, we got the job done. On to the next, and yeah, man, can't wait for the next one. It was a good card, both of us learned a lot today, you know, and uh, we don't lose, we only win and we learn, you know? So it was a good win. But also a great lesson, and uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for my team. Couldn't have done it without them, without my coach Robert, coach Tariq, my brother Hisham, and my family, my friends back home, and yeah, my sponsors, Hype Energy Drink, Fisher Aid, I Design Gold. Can be more grateful and thanks to Ahmed Sadiq as well and Abu Dhabi. We're taking it step by step, event by event, but we know each event will be better than the the previous and better and better and better so it will keep on keep on growing so there's no plan the plan is just we know that each event will be bigger the the, the long-term plan is is again as i said to have an arab fighter fight a global superstar in Abu Dhabi.